Could one lonely tooth-like mountain in the sage and basalt seas of Idaho still remember how to roar? Could a dome of glassy, silica-rich rock that rose like a blister from molten guts a few hundred thousand years ago ever unzip the cold crust of the eastern Snake River plain again and send ash, blocks, or a new bulb of viscous lava into the sky? Those are not rhetorical flourishes for internet panic. They are precisely the sorts of questions that matter when you pry into the anatomy and life history of a rhyolitic lava dome. The mountain everybody means when they say Big Southern is Big Southern Butte, a coalesced pair of rhyolite domes that stands some 2,500 feet above the surrounding plain, about 760 metres, and that, by everyday geological reckoning, is one of the largest lava domes on Earth. What follows is an investigation into the rock, the plumbing, the tectonics, the eruption physics, and the realistic odds that this particular dome could shake America again, told strictly as geology, mechanism, and evidence, without sensationalism. Big Southern Butte did not grow by piling basaltic rivers. It is a rhyolitic structure. That means the lava that built it was extremely high in silica, roughly three-quarters silica by weight, and correspondingly outrageously viscous compared with basalt. Viscosity is geology's leash on fluid motion. Basalt with silica around one half will behave like very stiff maple syrup that can nonetheless spread for tens of kilometres across a landscape. Rhyolite with silica closer to three quarters is more like toothpaste or even putty at eruptive temperatures. Because of that stickiness, rhyolitic magma resists flowing away and instead accumulates in and around a vent. When rhyolite reaches the surface, it can erupt explosively if gas expansion fragments the melt, or it can extrude slowly to form domes, spires, and swells. Big Southern Butte is the latter kind of monument, an extrusive high silica mass that formed as viscous rhyolite was pushed upward and extruded building steep flanks and lobate flow lobes that welded and coalesced into a two-lobed edifice, some six and a half kilometres across at the base, with a combined bulk on the order of eight cubic kilometres. How do you get a massive body of rhyolitic magma in the middle of a basaltic plain at all? The story of Big Southern Butte must be viewed against the canvas of the eastern Snake River Plain and the long migratory Yellowstone hotspot. Over millions of years, the hotspot migrated eastward beneath North America, leaving a trail of silicic and basaltic volcanism. The plain itself is dominated by low, widespread basalt that forms a near-featureless plain. But that plain is punctuated by rhyolite domes and other silicic features, the so-called big buttes that rise conspicuously above the basalt. These rhyolite domes, including Big Southern Butte, are concentrated along an axis through the plain where the crust has been structurally primed for magma ascent by rift zones and extensional faults. In this setting, rhyolitic magma did not simply pond as a shallow sill and cool. Instead, it punched through the younger basalt cover to emerge as high viscosity flows and domes. Importantly, geochemical analyses show that the rhyolite feeding these buttes is chemically distinct from the older Yellowstone caldera rhyolites, indicating either a different source or different processes of melting and differentiation in the crust beneath the plain. That chemical fingerprint matters because it tells us the buttes are not simply relics of the classic caldera chain that produced Yellowstone's super-eruptions. They are products of local melting and plumbing that operated under the unique mechanical and thermal regime of the eastern Snake River Plain.
If we go beneath the visible hill, the relevant mechanisms become even more instructive. A lava dome is the surface expression of a complex sequence of processes in a magma body and its conduit. First, heat and melt generation in the mantle or lower crust create silicic melt pockets that are buoyant relative to surrounding rocks. Because rhyolite is viscous, it typically accumulates in roughly coherent chambers or crystal-rich mush zones rather than flowing freely. Over time, processes such as fractional crystallization, where crystals drop out and leave the remaining melt richer in silica, crustal assimilation, where the melt melts and incorporates surrounding crustal material, and melt extraction concentrate and segregate silicic magma. Tectonic stress regimes and pre-existing fractures create pathways. When the buoyancy force overcomes the tensile strength of the overlying rock, a dike or narrow conduit opens and a pulse of rhyolitic magma begins to ascend. Because the melt is sticky and often crystal-rich, ascent is slow and conduit interiors can become clogged. The result can be episodic extrusion, where lobes of lava are pushed out, pile up, and then the conduit plugs again until the next pressure pulse. This pulsed extrusion builds the steep, lobate morphology seen at Big Southern Butte. Each new pulse forms a lobe that welds to the previous lobe, and the overall edifice grows by incremental additions rather than by a single fluid outpouring. Rhyolitic domes are also subject to violent transitions. If the dome's top or margins collapse, sometimes under their own weight, sometimes triggered by gas overpressure, earthquakes or rain-saturated destabilization, the collapse can expose hot, gas-charged interior rock. That exposure produces pyroclastic density currents, incandescent avalanches of blocks, ash and gas that travel downslope and weld at lower elevations. In modern contexts, dome collapse is the mechanism behind many of the most hazardous events at silicic volcanoes, for example, the deadly events at Mount Unzen in Japan and the repeated explosive behaviour at Chaiten in Chile. Big southern buttes preserved faces, blocky lava and welded breccias record a dominantly effusive dome-building history with evidence for Labat extrusion and local collapses rather than giant caldera-forming explosions. The rock textures, highly viscous, Porphyritic rhyolite with glassy matrices and flow banding betray a magma that cooled quickly at the surface but was gas poor by the time it extruded. Those textures can be read by petrographers to reconstruct ascent rates, crystallinity and volatile budgets when the dome was active. Outcrops and field evidence are the anchor for all of these inferences. Big Southern Butte stands above the basalt plain as a stark contrast in lithology and erosion behaviour. Its slopes expose flow-bounded lobes and thick, blocky faces. Its summit and flanks were historically a source of high-quality obsidian, which implies the rhyolite cooled to glass rather than crystallising throughout. Obsidian occurrences and the presence of welded glassy margins are consistent with extrusion from a high silica melt that cooled very quickly at the surface. The butte's base and surrounding exposures reveal a relationship with older basalt flows. In places, the rhyolite clearly intruded and domed up beneath basalt cover. In others, it cut through the basalt and erupted on top. Mapping these contacts, dating the flows, and measuring chemical compositions let geologists place the dome's growth into the broader tempo of the Snake River Plains' volcanic history. Field studies and radiometric dates converge on an eruptive age for the principal lobes of roughly 300,000 years ago, with neighbouring domes having formed at different times over a span of several hundred thousand years. 
That timing puts Big Southern Butte in the late Pleistocene, young by geological standards but ancient by human ones. So how do scientists judge the odds that Big Southern Butte could become active again? This is the heart of the Will It Shake America? Intrigue. Straight away, the regional context reduces the probability but does not make it impossible. The eastern Snake River Plain remains a zone of tectonic extension and of ongoing basaltic volcanism. The Yellowstone hotspot remains active beneath the region in a way that continues to shape crustal temperatures and melt generation. The United States Geological Survey and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory track seismicity across the Intermountain West and call the Yellowstone Plate Hotspot System one of the most seismically and volcanically active in the continental United States. However, there is a nuance. Big Southern Butte's rhyolites are geochemically distinct from the Yellowstone Caldera rhyolites, implying their magma source and melting processes were local phenomena rather than the direct products of the hotspot's giant caldera system. In plain terms, the Butte was an instance of localized rhyolite generation and extrusion that happened in a specific structural and thermal window. Without a repeat of the precise combination of crustal melting, magma segregation, melt accumulation, and opening of a pathway, the Butte is unlikely to spontaneously reawaken merely because the regional hotspot persists. Assessing current status therefore requires two lines of evidence, geological history and present-day monitoring. From the geological record, field mapping, lithologic relations, and radiometric dates, Big Southern Butte appears to be a Pleistocene construct whose principal eruptive episodes are long over. There is no recent volcanic stratigraphy indicating Holocene activity at the Butte, unlike neighbouring features on the plain that have erupted basalt in the geologically recent past. From the monitoring side, the tools scientists use to detect reawakening are seismicity, ground deformation, gas emissions, hydrothermal changes, and geothermal anomalies. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and regional seismic networks continuously record earthquakes across the larger hotspot and plain. While earthquake swarms and isolated events are common in the Intermountain West, these are usually shallow crustal events associated with tectonic extension rather than deep long-period signals that would betray pressurizing magma beneath a rhyolite dome. In short, there is no documented seismic deformation or gas signal at Big Southern Butte today that would indicate magma movement beneath it. That absence of unrest is a strong practical indicator that the Butte is not poised to erupt in the immediate future. Still, not imminent is not the same as forever dead. Voluminous silicic magmatism can be dormant for hundreds of thousands of years and remobilize if crustal conditions change. Mechanistically, reactivation of a rhyolite dome requires recharging the local magma system. New melt must be generated or an existing crystal mush must be remobilized by heating, volatile influx or injection of basaltic melt that lowers the mush's solidus. In many continental settings, basaltic injections from below can act as the match that reheats a silicic mush, decreases its viscosity or raises pressure to fragment and extrude rhyolite. The eastern Snake River Plain routinely produces basalt. Thus, the ingredients exist in the regional kitchen. But the precise recipe matters. The Butte's rhyolitic sources appear to have been produced by a combination of crustal melting and local differentiation that is not trivially reproduced by typical basaltic flooding. 
Moreover, the structural pathways that once permitted rhyolite to punch through the basalt plain would have to be reactivated. If those rifts, faults, or fractures have been buried, welded shut by later flows, or otherwise cooled and stiffened, they become much harder for magma to reopen. Finally, pressure regimes in a residual mush change on geological time scales. Crystal frameworks stiffen, volatiles escape, and the system becomes effectively frozen unless sufficient new heat and volatiles change the state. Practically speaking, given the elapsed time since eruption, the available evidence favours a conclusion of very low probability for reactivation on human timescales, low enough that USGS and regional agencies do not list Big Southern Butte as an active hazard comparable to known Holocene volcanoes. But because Earth does not ask for our convenience, very low is not zero. We can sharpen that probabilistic picture using what volcanologists call conditional likelihoods. If fresh basaltic magmatism were to intrude at shallow crustal levels beneath the butte and interact with an extant silicic mush, the probability of some form of reactivation would rise substantially, perhaps from negligible to modest, because basaltic injection is an efficient remobilizer. Conversely, absent such injections and absent tectonic reopening of conduit pathways, the calculated probability of rhyolitic re-eruption within a thousand-year window is extremely low compared to frequently active volcanoes. This framing is why the scientific agencies prioritize observing actual precursor signals rather than asserting categorical future eruptions based solely on past activity. The right data to watch would be a sustained sequence of long-period seismic events, shallow earthquake swarms directly beneath the edifice, measurable uplift at centimetre scales over months to years, or new gas fluxes at the surface. Any of those would push the probability estimates upward and trigger increased scrutiny. At present, none of those proxy indicators is recorded for Big Southern Butte. In the end, Big Southern Butte stands as a silent witness to an older, deeper rhythm of Earth's crust, a monument sculpted not by sudden catastrophe, but by the slow, muscular push of molten rock solidifying under its own weight. It is a geological time capsule, a frozen moment when pressure, temperature and chemistry briefly aligned to create one of the planet's grandest rhyolitic domes. Today the winds carve its slopes, and the basalt plains quietly hum with heat below. But the mountain itself keeps its composure, unbroken, unmoved, yet never entirely beyond possibility because within every extinct or dormant volcano lies a memory of fluid motion, a history written in crystal lattices and glass textures, and a question that no seismometer can ever fully silence. Could the engine that once forged this dome still stir again? Science answers with cautious honesty. There is no pulse now, no tremor, no gas breath, no measurable lift beneath its ribs of stone, yet the same processes that birthed it continue elsewhere under new crust in future centuries we will never see. Big Southern Butte is part of that continuum. Its presence reminds us that continental crust is neither inert nor eternal. It grows, melts, fractures, and renews itself through cycles of magmatic breathing. For now, the butte sleeps, but not because it is dead, rather because the earth beneath it has shifted its focus, building pressure in other rooms of its fiery architecture. If this exploration of one of Earth's most enigmatic volcanic giants sparked your curiosity, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep-dive analyses of the world's restless geology and tap that hype icon, it helps push this investigation to a wider audience, 
and keeps the science of our planet's hidden forces alive and visible for everyone who still looks up at mountains and wonders what they might yet remember.